Okay, guys, what's up? I hope you're having a great day today. Now, today's uh, first, 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 first. Um, I know you guys are, most of you guys are longtime listeners of the show. Thanks. If you're new, welcome. Hey, I'm glad you made it. Um, this is an exciting show. We talk with top producing real estate agents, coaches, and just generally, man, we talk about entrepreneurship through the lens of an agent. If you don't sell real estate, no problems. Um, all the stuff we talk about are very tactical, strategic, boots on the ground, ways to build your business. And look, man, I've listened to a lot of podcasts out there. Um, and even the top rated ones, I mean, I know a lot of those guys personally, I'm not going to say their names. The content is not that great. Um, this one, I'm confident you'll enjoy. Now, today's today's episode um, is uh, it's kind of a twofer. I've not done this before, but um, um, I actually did these yesterday. Um, to, this is airing on a Friday. I did these yesterday on Thursday. Um, and, it, and I look. Normally, these interviews are about an hour. I only had 30 minutes. So uh, I'm giving you two of them. And I'm going to kind of give, and I did these back to back. So I'm kind of uh, giving you a taste of how my day looks like. Uh, my first interview was, uh, was a pretty, um, the audio was not that great. The guy was on a cell phone. Um, but this guy just sold his business for $30 million. This guy's under 40 built this fantastic, I mean, I think he's like, like 33, 34, built this fantastic business, literally just sold it for $30 million after seven years, started it in 07, uh, well, eight years, I guess, 07 to 2015. Um, and I'm not saying that's his revenue. I'm saying that's what he cashed out. So we talk about, you know, not necessarily tactics in that interview of how to build your business, but we talk about how to spot opportunity. Um, and he was a real estate agent and uh, saw a new opportunity, kind of jumped on it. So how to spot opportunity, um, how, how when you do spot an opportunity, how to go out and tackle it and then quickly, quickly build it. So, so we, do, we do get tactical there. Um, the second interview, uh, well, you know, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You listen to the first one, and I'll give you an intro to the second one in a minute or after this one. <laughs> Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. Real quick, guys, just a little bit of housekeeping. As you know, uh, my Twitter handle is at Super Agents Live. Uh, I'd love to meet you in Twitterville. Um, the hashtag for the show is Unpack That Idea. So go ahead, tweet it out, use that hashtag, and that's a big follow train, man. You'll, you'll, I'll follow you. A lot of people follow you. Um, secondarily, uh, look, um, this show. Uh, for the last two years has fundamentally been free and we'll keep it free, but it is supported through our radio arm. If you want listing leads, listing leads, um, radio, that's it. Radio, it works. And by the way, in this episode, we're going to talk about radio. So you can go to realestateradioexperts.com, check out my videos, uh, fill out the getting started uh, sheet, um, or just go to superagentslive.com. We have a dominate with radio tab. All right. Um, a couple things that, that we're working on right now um, to help you guys. One is we're creating a backstage pass uh, program, which ba- it's, look, you, it's a paid for program. So it's like the first paid thing we're going to launch. But basically, it, I want to kind of give you guys access to my, to my guests. So, so, you know, uh, let's say I'm going to have Bob Corcoran on the show or I'm going to have some other top producer. I'm going to let you guys know up front who it is. Um, I'm going to let you guys get, you know, we're going to fire a, a go-to meeting uh, uh, live video thing. And you guys are going to be there. So you guys can ask me questions. You can ask my guests questions and, uh, and, and just generally participate. So I think that would be really cool. And then we are in the middle and, and not too far from, from, from completing a done-for-you email big box. So a lot of times, you know, email marketing is awesome. Hopefully you have a list. If you don't, most people go, geez, I don't know what to say. Well, we're going to solve that for you. So anyhow, that's it. Let's get to the episode. I hope you like it.
Today on the show, um, we're doing something a little bit different. I'm excited to have today's guest. Now, today's guest is a serial entrepreneur, um, and uh, he's built a real estate company a little bit differently. He has a rental company. It's called Rentals Where Rental Warehouse. Um, he's had massive, massive growth. Uh, I think right now he's ranked number three fastest growing uh, real estate companies. I'm thrilled to welcome Brenton Hayden. Hey, Brenton, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. No problems. So, look, Brenton, I'm, I'm, I really want to get into what you've done, how you did it. But uh, look, you, you know, I read somewhere that uh, when you were younger, you, a headhunter told you, "Hey, look, being a young person, the only way to make six figures is real estate." So you jumped into real estate. However, instead of, I think you may have started selling, but I, I want to know how you started renting. Um, di- how did you see the opportunity? You know, you're right. Um, I was a corporate executive at a young age with a big company named Kellogg's, and I did very well for myself there. But uh, after some mistakes, I was actually terminated. And uh, I did go to a headhunter and said, how do I, um, uh, you know, pursue this sort of income, this sort of experience? And he did point me into real estate. At that time, uh, I didn't know nothing about it, didn't have anybody in the family that did it. So uh, I looked up who the biggest, best agent was in my market, and I found a guy named Jonathan. And uh, after one of the weirdest and longest interview processes ever, I was able to get a job as his buyer's agent. And it was there that I got the idea, helping buyers buy investment properties, uh, that uh, a leasing company, or eventually we become a leasing and management company, was what uh, Minnesotans needed, and, and little did I know what America needed, and, and I was about to time it very, very correctly. So I spent about six months there learning how to represent investors. And in buying, helping these investors, both low and high profile, buy homes, I found that there was one constant need, dependable, standardized um, leasing and management services. But at first, um, they were desperate to find somebody who knew how to lease their properties effectively, quickly, and was motivated to do that. It was kind of, uh, at the time, something that was below most agents, and they didn't want to do it. I mean, the market was thriving, so why why work on a $1,000, $2,000 commission when you can go, you know, sell or buy a house and earn in much, much more. So I was kind of doing the dirty work or the busy work of the real estate agents, but I was gobbling it all up uh, all at once. And it, it turned out to be pretty fruitful for me. And it also uh, turned into what would be a business that I later sold to a private equity group here just a few weeks ago. Yep, I heard about that. And and, and just, just, just to kind of set the table, um, uh, what were your revenues last year? I mean, give us a sense of how, how far you've come since, you know, tw- 2007. So, you know, it was just me, right? I'm working at actually kind of a small boutique brokerage uh, called Counselor Realty, which is only in Minnesota. And, um, you know, this Jonathan Zabrocki guy went on his own, and it was at that time I decided I was going to go on my own, too, and pursue being a, a property manager or a professional landlord for hire. Uh, so we went from, you know, uh, not, not having any experience in being a zero-person company except for me to uh, when I sold it this year, uh, we were sold over a $30 million business, um, and we had offices in 28 states managing 10,000 rental properties and had about $2 billion worth of rental properties under assets, and we did that in just seven and a half years. Wow. Wow. And I, I know that timing, you know, with, with every business, you know, timing has a lot to do with it, and I, and I want to get into timing for you later, but what was that thing, Brenton, that you recognized? I'm still a little bit hazy how you felt, uh, you know, you launched in Minnesota, but what were those triggers that you said this, you know, being a professional landlord for investors was, was a needed thing. What were those triggers? Well, I couldn't, I couldn't find anyone to refer these really great investors to get help for leasing and management in Minnesota. I just, they, I'd help them buy an investment property and they said, great, can you help me lease it, manage it now? No, I can't. I don't know how to do that. Well, I'd look around, I'd, I'd ask questions. There wasn't a reputable company. There wasn't a nationwide company. There wasn't anybody with a value proposition. So that was glaringly obvious that there was a need. Uh, also, real estate agents felt it was beneath them, so nobody really wanted to do it. Yeah. Um, it was un- rather unregulated at that time, about seven and a half years ago. Nobody really you know, permitted rental properties. There wasn't a lot of rental rules and restriction uh, other than some national guidelines. So it was really kind of like, uh, um, you know, if you're familiar with the term blue and red ocean, it's very blue ocean yet in a very big industry like real estate. So I just saw an opportunity to become the best damn leasing agent at first. I'm just going to become a real estate agent that helps people lease. And that's what everybody desperately wanted more than anything. Cause a lot of people still will choose to manage the property on their own. 
But uh, it was about two years into being the best Sam leasing agent that we decided to open up the management division, which also became somewhat, somewhat very lucrative uh, for us and something people also wanted. And that was listening to those, those clients that we leased homes for for two years, saying, you know, we really only wish we could get a really affordable management company that basically did the four things really well, which were collect rent, enforce the lease, um, uh, collect rent, enforce the lease, coordinate the maintenance, and do the accounting. And I said, okay, well, that seems simple enough. I can do those four things. So I literally built a management company uh, that had a price for 79 bucks a month, no matter the property, no matter the rent price. We would do the accounting, we would enforce the lease, um, and, and do those other four items. It coordinate the maintenance, so on and so forth. So 79 bucks a month, $2.54 a day, wow. and people went nuts for it. We went from you know, a zero-dollar company to almost a million dollars our first year in profit. Um, it was just gangbusters, and it was just me. And at the time, I was uh, a guy driving around in the car with a couple of assistants helping me uh, schedule showing, list appointments, et cetera. And now we, when we sold the company, we had over 250 people in the network and, and 100 and some plus employees. That's amazing. And, and I just want to point out, if people aren't, if you don't, if you're not, you know, I, I'm in San Diego, and uh, so you guys don't have a, a, a footprint here. But so I just want to point out to everybody, what Brenton has and, or what he just sold, the company Renters Warehouse is a franchise. So if you're out there slinging real estate and you, uh, you, know, you think maybe this is, you're more suited to this, uh, you reach out to Winner's Warehouse and see what you know. See if it's right for you. So, okay. So yeah, indeed. He, here's here's what. So you start. You see a, a problem. Um, you build a solution. Um, how, help me. I, I want to know why you kept pushing after. You know, you make a million dollars in profit. I mean, you were a young kid. You make a million bucks. Isn't that enough? Like, what is in you, Brenton, that you said, no, no, no. I want to take this to ten, twenty, thirty million. Well, you know, um, that was really weird and unexpected. I didn't, you know, it was kind of like uh, I, I realized it after the fact, right? So I do my text at the end of the year, and I'm like, holy Christ, this, this thing really took, you know, granted we were busy, but we were making money. I didn't even have time to collect the money. So that was really, you know, kind of an after the fact thing, and, and that was a big aha, like, wow, this is, this, this, we're not even that good at this yet. In our first year, we're doing this. So it was, uh, it was rewarding. It was confidence uh, a booster. But, um, you know, from I, the reason I got into real estate in general was after a myriad of messy uh, firings as a young age. At, um, at, uh, I got fired from Kellogg's for making a mistake. Um, I worked at a real estate company, and he thought I was too entrepreneurial, so he fired me too. Um, so it was, it was a bit of inspiration and depression that fueled the next seven and a half years of my life. Uh, for example, uh, when I was laid off from Kellogg's in my real estate company, I was not homeless. I'm, I'm 20. I'm homeless. I'm living in my old mobile. I got, uh, I got an attitude problem, so I don't want to go back home and tell mom and dad I need to move in. So uh, in a fit of inspiration and depression, I got out a yellow notebook, and I wrote down seven pages back to front of what I stood for, what I stood against, what I wanted to be and what I didn't want to be, and the things that were important to me and that, and that weren't. It was, it was just a, a, a long emotional stream of consciousness. But it became my, my, my life's plan. It became my roadmap to, to success. And I, I carried that piece of paper around with me for five years until uh, a move actually misplaced it. I'll find it one day, and it'll be worth a lot more to me then when I find it. But yeah. um, that was it. I mean, it was this, it was, it, I harnessed this depression and inspiration because, you know, I heard a quote once, and it, it stuck with me. Inspiration is perishable. And, and when you have, in, when you're inspired and you're feeling inspired, you know, it's a good time to swear off the weekend and just harness that inspiration and get it down. Start start work on that project, and and that's what I did. I, I took that motivation, I harnessed this plan, and then I said, you know what, what what do I got to lose? Let's just go for it. And along the way, you know, I candidly, I don't, I never thought I would realize it because in that yellow notebook it said that I would retire when I was 27 with seven million dollars in after cash, and I'd have these houses, and I'd be able to retire my dad. And, um, and I get, well, and I crunched the numbers. I did all of that. Well, you know, uh, uh, it felt real, but it felt, you know, like a dream, right? It was my dream. Well, a couple years in, even after my first year, when you kick out a million dollars in profit on something that, you know, as a guy who's, you know, a year earlier was living in his Oldsmobile showering at a park, and now you're kicking out a million in profit off an idea in a year. Well, that that gave me fire in the belly. Um, that made it realize that this this thing actually might happen, and if I can keep play my cards right this will this will happen so every year after that the continued success was validation uh i, I want to tell you it wasn't easy and it wasn't without lots of mistakes and lots of issues but um 
you're able having that roadmap that I wrote was able to kind of benchmark success. It, it allowed me to, um, I don't know, uh, monitor, uh, monitor the traction towards my, my dream. It, it allowed me to know if I was making progress or not. And every time I was feeling down, I could look back at that and it would show me great progress, which would refill the tank and the fire in my belly. So that's where it all came from. Okay. And that's great. I mean, it's, but I think, th- uh, you know, there's something more here, Brenton, I think, because, because, Somehow, not only did you, you know, you, you, you create this massive success, but, but the, here's what I want to get at. So most people, when they start a real estate company, whether it's selling real estate or, or as you did rentals, you know, they, they go and they meet people and uh, they grow their email list. They, they do it in very typical fashion, right? Google pay-per-click. You somehow had the inspiration and had the courage to take some of that hard-earned million bucks and throw it into mass media, which is radio yep. and TV, so, so absolutely, and and from my understanding, Brenton, radio is the thing that really, really put you guys on the map. I mean, that's the thing that really, you know, up and to the right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, I, I kind of fell into it. So I met. I was in. Uh, you know, I had this real estate company. It's going fine, but I actually started a limousine company too at the same time. Um, and I bought these limousines out of uh, foreclosure. Uh, well, this woman owned a franchise of uh, it's a dating service called It's Just Lunch, and I had a partnership with my limousine company and her, where we would uh, you know donate limousines for for dates and charity events. Well, uh, I'm driving home from one of these events one night after we had sponsored a limo for actually Jack Nicholas, and um, the radio came on. It was It's Just Lunch endorsement commercial by none other than Glenn Beck, the third most listened to man in radio, endorsing this dating service for for my friend. I immediately picked up the phone and said, how in the heck did you get Glenn Beck to endorse your small business? And she told me about this media agency uh, in Minnesota, and basically just this woman who was just had connected to everybody. Her name was Tracy Collins. She worked with big clients. And so I called her up, and I begged and pleaded to get a meeting, and I told her I wanted to spend 3000 a month on radio. And she's like, you know, it's really nice, and I'll, I'll help you find somebody, but, you know, you're much too small for my type of business. Um, well, I persuaded her to take a meeting, and after she walked out of that meeting, she tells me this now, that she, she couldn't believe what she had heard, and she loved the idea so much, she, she became my personal account manager. And we put that 3000 to to, uh, to test with a Glenn Beck endorsement. Uh, she was able to introduce me and get me a meeting with Glenn Beck, and I was explaining my product, and he just loved it. Uh, so he became my first endorsement that year alone. Uh, we generated another million dollars off of the Glenn Beck radio spot that we played on a conservative talk radio station during his TV show or his radio show. Okay. So that's another light bulb. We're like, Oh, holy heck With that much money. So we'll get 3000 a month in we're taking out 10, 15,000 a month in commissions off this little advertisement. So it came to us. Why don't we put 20,000 a month into this? Let's reinvest some of the profit. We put more in, more came out. Well, then it became the idea. Why don't we get Sean Hannity? Why don't we get Rush Limbaugh? Why don't we try, um, sports athletes? Why don't we try local morning tacos on top four? And now we have dozens of professional spokespeople that use our product, love our product, endorse our product, and they blast it all over the radio waves. It's now our number one lead uh, acquisition source for Renner's Warehouse. And it, now there's a lot more to it than just putting a guy on the radio and, and asking him to promote your brand. Um, but we have a secret way of doing a secret sauce to radio that really works for us in a big, big way. And it is our number one lead source. It's something we spend uh, tens of millions of dollars on in the United States. We have an incredible relationship with uh, iHeartRadio and Cumulus and some of the biggest partners there who have even worked with us in the early stages doing paper performance radio. Wow. And we didn't even have the money to pay for radio sometimes, but they would say, why don't, if it works so well, why don't we just give you the radio and we'll, we'll pay, you pay us on performance? I mean, that's how good radio partners really have been to us. We've been fortunate that it works so well. Now, when I started another real estate company, a buy and sell company, and I, I actually just closed that down, three weeks ago, not because it was failing, but because we want to focus on Renner's Warehouse's corporate national expansion now with this private equity group. But I put it on the radio with spokespeople and, and not spokespeople, dud, terrible, it doesn't work. I do it for Renner's Warehouse, go to the busters. I can put it on any station, anywhere, and people love what I'm, what my product is. So it's not just, it's it, you got to have the right product too, you got to have the right strategy, but if, if, if you do... Radio is an amazing source to help you grow your business. I, I guarantee it. Yeah, no, no, and and I, 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 so I agree with you. And and I'll tell you, you know, all I do on this show is I talk with the top people in real estate, and there's a very, very clear cor- uh, correlation between the people who are doing 200 deals or more 
all those people have a radio or TV initiative. So, so it does, yep. it does work for those folks. I, it's, it's, it's curious to me that it didn't work for your buy and sell. Why do you well, think I that failed? Explain for you? that actually. Yeah. Um, you know, it did, but it's very different than what we experienced at Renner's Warehouse. So, uh, you know, at Renner's Warehouse, we're a high volume real estate brokerage. It, my Minnetonka, Minnesota location, I'll do 500 transactions a month with just 68 agents. It's a very high volume leasing business. And that's just that one location. But we generate those leads by the thousands a month, and that will turn into commissions within 30, 60, 90 days. The lead time in property management is very short. Now, real estate buy sell, the lead time is very long, and they have so many options to go with. And the value proposition as a traditional agent is somewhat much more difficult to present to a consumer than it is in the property management business. There's nobody like me in Renner's Warehouse. But in the real estate game, it's very hard to be different from everybody else other than just be a great real estate agent and have a, a special product with them. But Keller Williams, Cobalt Banker, you know, uh, um, Remax, they're generally damn near the same to the consumer. The agent is what makes the difference. Renner's Warehouse wanted to be different. We wanted you to hire the company, not the agent. And in real estate, you hire the agent, generally not the company. Right, okay. And so it, it, it's, a diff, it's apples and oranges. Granted, they're both fruits, right? But <laughs> it, it required a different strategy. So the same strategy that worked for one real estate business certainly didn't work for traditional real estate. So... I guess what I'm getting at is we must be doing something entirely different from those that are, have a secret sauce that do hundreds of deals in the real estate game from the secret sauce that we use that do thousands of deals in the property management game. Right, right, right. And, and, and you know, offline, I can tell you what that is. But so, so I'd love to hear it. Yeah. So I, I want to know, you know, so the timing, you know, I've done a bunch of companies and they've all been based on, a, you know, external timing event and you started this in 07 there you know it's amazing that in the world of real estate you know hundreds thousands of years old you know this thing right professional landlording didn't exist you know and you're the guy who can yeah, just that right. something it's amazing yeah. um so so the the cat's out of the bag right everybody knows about you everybody knows about the, you know your massive growth what what do you think the biggest vulnerability vulnerability for you guys is with you know a bunch of competition you know, springing out everywhere i just fixed it i just fixed it i was my own biggest vulnerability my my pocketbook could only go so far uh, on my on my income and wealth and, and management of the company i took it from 0 to 30 million and i got it to 28 different states um I just partnered with a, a guy who's uh, bought and sold over 120 companies, He's managed a multi-billion dollar private equity group in Beverly Hills for many years. He just acquired a control stake in Renner's Warehouse and, and, and took over control of Renner's Warehouse. His plan now is to open up 30 corporate offices in the next three years instead of franchising, and, and we'll put franchising on slow simmer. So we're still going to be franchising, but in smaller markets. But we're going to go to all the major top 30 markets in the country with corporate locations and millions of dollars in each to use our, our secret sauce and advertising and take what we've done so well at the corporate level and open our own shops. Um, that was our biggest vulnerability. We couldn't get to market share fast enough before our competitors started to, you know, enjoy the spoils of this industry too. Right. We're now the largest uh, professional land in the country. We want to keep that. Uh, and uh, I don't know that I could have kept it. I was doing a good job. I closed in on them. We came number one before I sold. But uh, I needed some extra firepower, and I just got it. In fact, uh, the guy who um, took over our company uh, has got some really notable investors, from Ronald Reagan's financial uh, policy advisors to a guy who invented uh, rentpayments.com. He's one of the largest digital processors of uh, rent payments in the country, too. Uh, uh, a, a guy on my board was a CEO of Verifone, a billion company for 12 years. So we now have expertise. We have a strategic partnership, and we have an unlimited bank account to become the the chapstick of property management, the Kleenex. We're going to become the professional landlords of rent estate. I don't even call it real estate because what you guys do in the real estate business is nothing like what we do in the rent estate business and vice versa. And so we're, we're, we're going to become the professional landlords of rent estate. Well, uh, and that's our that's our plan, and we couldn't do that without the money in the back, and we have that now. Yeah, so got it. Cap game over. Right, perfect. Okay, and, and capital is always a limiting factor. So, so one of the things I, I I wanted to ask you know I want I want to I'm going to ask you I'm going to do a bad thing as an interview and ask you two questions. But so first, earlier you 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 mentioned your price point seventy nine bucks. Now to me. That seems, you know, you're the only guy in town. You're the first guy in town. You've, you know, you've, you've, you've perfected the model. Why in the world wouldn't you come out with 274? Why was it like, why did you put such a low tag on it? Well, investors buy investment properties to cash flow. 
and I'm making a healthy, healthy income off 79 bucks a month because of the sophisticated technologies we invented and or acquired. Uh, we've, we've made a semi-automated process out of property management using sophisticated technology, and then we coupled that with expert human landlords. So we're a very human company that's highly sophisticated with pri- proprietary technology. It makes it so you can't compete with us. Um, and that's our secret sauce. So we're able to do it cheaper and better, and therefore we win. Um, now, we could raise our prices, and we do. In some markets, it's just more expensive to do business. And in South Florida, we have offices in Miami and Sunny Isles. They'll charge 100 bucks a month for property management because of the, you know, a rent of a 2,000-square-foot office space costs them six grand versus a rent of a 2,000-square-foot office space in Minnesota will cost you 1,000. So it's just more expensive to do business in some areas, so therefore we have to raise our prices. But 99 bucks is like our worst price. So, and even then, uh, that, that's going to beat most competitors out in the market. It's a flat fee because our job actually is easier on higher-end rentals than it is on lower-end rentals. So uh, a percentage-based fee we think is flawed. Uh, we think it's, it's greedy, so we don't do it. Um, we use a flat fee. We know, what the, we know what the job is. We tell you exactly what we're going to do. We're going to lease your home. We're going to warranty your tenant. We're going to collect your rent, enforce your lease, coordinate maintenance with our discounted vendors, and do all your accounting. And, uh, and if you have fears, we have three risk protection programs. We can protect you against property damage. We can guarantee the rent and we can cover all costs associated with eviction. So now we're not only catering to sophisticated investors that can choose the services they want. We're also catering to the everyday homeowner that never thought about renting that now can look at a company like ours and say, wow, they make it easy, fast and worry free. I'm just going to go with them and outsource this other town home that I had and move in with my girlfriend. Or I'm going to take that job in San Francisco instead of Minnesota. So we're catering to everybody. And that was, the, that was a big missing part. Most people did not want to work with one guy who had one investment property. Joe the plumber who bought a duplex and lives on the other side didn't want to man. Well, we'll help him. Most other companies won't. In fact, 96% of our clients have two homes or less. We yeah. don't really dabble in the big game because the big guys, they don't want us. They, they'll do it themselves. If they got 5,000 units, they'll hire a gang of people to do it. It's the people that have five units and under that are desperately in need of professional landlordship, and that's what we provide. Okay. And, and what, here's what I wanted to get to with pricing is, you know, certainly you put a, 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 you know, a $79. Look, I have a couple rentals. I never get the rent on time. I know like, I have one place that, that uh, it's probably 400 bucks under market. Um, but I just, I don't, you know, like I could benefit from your service, but, but here's my, here's, here's what I want to get at Brenton is you, you, you perfected the model. You came out with this flat fee. Um, could that is the real estate agent at large at risk for somebody, not you, but, but somebody like you to come in and do the same thing and, and say, instead of selling your house and we're going to charge a, a, a straight 6%, come in, flat fee it, greatly reduce the prices and change the world of, of real estate for agents. You know, I actually owned a franchise of E flat fee real estate. That tanked. Um, I bought it in the time when everybody, the real estate market was collapsing, their equity was collapsing, and I thought to myself, I'm going to be a brilliant business. People are going to need to preserve equity. They're going to rely less on a real estate agent. And I went knee-deep, and I went and acquired two companies, e Flat Fee Realty and WebDigs.com, which was uh, like Redfin. Um, I acquired them. They were great. I'm going to make millions. These are the next best idea. They tanked. Nobody wanted to rely on themselves. They became more dependent on a real estate agent than ever. So it's very important that we keep the humanistic approach in our business as you guys do in real estate because Redfin, all these guys, they're not making any money. Yet Remax, Coal Banker, and these full-service human being businesses, they're making still all the money. So, uh, And I should clear up something. That 79 bucks is just for me to manage the property. Everything I do is a la carte, which actually is a value proposition. Most of my competitors require you to lease, manage, and, and you got to sign long-term commitments with them. We don't have any of that. You can hire me just to lease. You can hire me just to manage. You can cancel at any time. There's no cancellation fees, month-to-month contract. So we make it easy. We make it worry-free. So if we don't do a great job, you let us go. So there's a lot of value proposition there. We also have trademark services like those risk protection programs that you can't really get elsewhere. Um, But we'll charge upwards of one to two months rent to place a tenant in a property. Mm. But we provide a lot of value now. I'm going to guarantee your tenant is going to pay rent for nine months in some cases 12 months or even up to 18 months if they sign a longer term lease. And if they don't, I owe you a new tenant completely free. Uh, and so there's some value proposition to that. And so uh, there's no fees up front. There's no marketing fees. There's no lease signing fees. It's just if and when I bring you a tenant that I'll warranty and guarantee, would you agree to pay me a commission of one month's rent or two months rent if it's a three year lease? 
everybody says absolutely without a doubt. And then on top of that, it's non-exclusive. So go hire a REMAX agent. Go hire another leasing agent. And whoever gets the job done first, that in the client's best interest, gets paid. Wow. And that's how we work. We still don't have that uh, exclusive relationship, yet 99% of our clients are pretty much exclusive with us. But they just don't like, they like knowing the idea that if you guys suck, I can fire you and I don't have this 12-month contract. I think it's, we just, we changed a lot of the, we listened to what they wanted and what they didn't want it and we created the company around it and that's what became Renner's Well. Got it. That's cool. So, so just so I understand, Brenton, um, you know, so you have an a la carte menu of services. So, so if I want you to place a, uh, you know, put a tenant in my house, you'll do it. Uh, you're going to charge me one yep. to 2%. Um, it, it, one to two months rent. One to two months rent. Okay. Sorry. Um, wh- what about if I say, Hey, I want you to guarantee the performance. Is that, do I pay? Is that like insurance? Is that like, am I paying? It's kind yeah. of like, okay. We have some insurance products that, um, uh, were, we, they were currently warranty plans under a lot of states now and some states they're becoming insurance products. So we're going through a retool, but, uh, yeah, we've had guaranteed rent product where if your tenant doesn't pay the rent, our insurance company will pay the rent for up to six months, uh, with low to no deductibles. We have products that say that we'll cover up to $100,000 of accidental tenant damage. Wow. Um, fire, smoke, uh, intrusions in the wall. They drive. We've got that covered in a deductible, $0. Cost 20 bucks a month. Is it, well, well, um, well, hold on, hold on. Is that an internal product or do you, it's, you know, or, I mean, are you, is that your a, money? You're, it's you're a private to label me? product that we, okay. uh, we okay. partnered with an insurance company. And then, you know, in a, in a month or so, we might, it, it'll probably most likely just be ours. Uh, we're, we're deciding to become a, an insurance company as well as a property management company because our insurance products are so, um, uh, well, we thought they were warranty products, but a recent audit has gotten us in a little trouble. So we're going through retooling. And as a result, it's actually going to afford us the opportunity to become our own. Uh, insurance company and sell proprietary products with the the, the partnership of uh, a very large insurance company underwriting us. Got it. So yeah, I mean that's a huge product. And then we have the eviction protection product, which uh, for ten bucks a month, if your tenant gets evicted, we write the check. We go to the housing court, we get them out, we we'll move in a new tenant. And if you're under warranty, that means we'll pay. We'll, if you're under warranty, meaning the tenant didn't last nine months, let's say six months in, they get evicted. Well, we pay for the eviction. Let's say they left ten thousand dollars of damage, we pay for the damage. And let's say because it was in six months, we owe you a new tenant for free. Go to your REMAX agent. Go to any other agent in the country and tell them your tenant just, you know, stop paying rent six months in and ask them what they'll do. We right. pay for the damage. We cover the rent. We go, we go and uh, get them evicted, and then we give you a free tenant. Now, I can't do that if one out of five of my tenants go bad. None of my tenants go bad. I mean, we have like one-tenth of one percent of my tenants get evicted nationwide because of of a proprietary screening and marketing process that gives us a, a massive pool of applicants. For example, when I rental prop, when I put a property on the rental market, we don't have an MLS generally. In fact, most of my offices do not use the MLS whatsoever for rental properties. We put them on a series of 220 plus websites using our technology called Rent Feeder, where we can syndicate our ad to all the major sites, Truvia, Zillow, uh, Realtor.com, Rentals.com, you name it. We get premium placement. And as a result, that gets us thousands of leads that allow us to rent the property faster and perform more money. Got it. Okay. We only have a couple minutes. And then there's, I have so much stuff I want to – normally these interviews are an hour long. You actually got on a weird one of my other calendars, and we only have 30 minutes. I have another call. So, so look, really quickly, Brenton, one – what I mean, look, I, you guys are going public. I mean, that's got to be your, your goal here, right? That's one of our exit strategies. Um, it is one of our exit strategies. Um, we'd also like to get the attention of uh, one of the greatest franchisors in the game, Realogy. Uh, they did look at us when we were selling to the private equity groups. And uh, we, you know, once we turn this into a quarter of a billion dollar business, we'll, we'll talk to them again or we'll go public. So we have, uh, you know, we want to become a quarter of a billion dollar revenue business in the next uh, 36 months. We have every intention to do that, and when we do, we're going to go public. We're going to sell. Wow, that's amazing, man. Um, okay, so so I have to. So you know, uh, you mentioned how many units do you have under management right now? You mentioned a number earlier. We have ten thousand individual properties okay. in twenty eight states, um, and six thousand of those actually are just in Minnesota. So the other four thousand are part of a recent uh, year expansion plan through franchising. Um, and now we're opening in Austin, uh, Seattle, and Portland as corporate locations here almost immediately. Okay. So here, here's my question. With t- you have 10,000 units. Uh, you have investors buying and selling all the time. Are you going to start a real estate division or how, how, do, how do you deal with those, those, those investors? I'm glad you asked that. Yeah. I, 
I had a real estate franchise brand called RW Realty that had been in development for two years. We had completed it. We had built out an amazing website. Um, in fact, anyone wants to check it out, it's only going to be up for a little bit longer. It's RW Realty 360. It's an amazing new real estate company that we invented to be the little brother, little sister of Renner's Warehouse. However, last week we decided that we are going to close that division of our business, albeit very doing very well, because we believe it alienates us from some of our best real estate referral sources, real estate agents. We believe we should sell more of our best sellers and try to diversify into the real estate business. Uh, and so we're going to focus on corporate locations doing just Renner's Warehouse, and we are taking our managing director and our managing broker from RW Realty, and he's going to now become our business development leader of real estate agents. So we're not going to get into the traditional buy-sell or even flat-fee real estate business. We're going to become the world's greatest professional landlords, and that's it. Got and we're going to partner with the world's greatest real estate agents to help us do that. And, and I looked at that site. Um, is, is this a Boomtown site, Brenton? It is Boomtown. Isn't that, isn't that amazing technology they have? Yeah, yeah. I know. That I, we have to turn it down. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know Greer. Greer's... We just put it up. We just completed that thing, too. I'm really proud of what they did over there. Yep. No, they did a good job. Um, okay. Um, so it covered agents. They just raised a bunch of money, by the way. $15 yep. million. Dollars by a private equity group, they're going to become big time as well. I really like what they're doing over there. I, I agree. I think they're doing some interesting stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't get their end game, though. I, don't, I, I, I have to think that those, you know, so you, you raise $15 million at, you know, a, what, a $50 million valuation, um, $45 million, you know, whatever, 30 to 50. Um, I, I, you know, are they looking for an acquisition from Zillow or Trulia? Or, I mean, what? I don't know. I don't know. What... You know, their, their game is twofold, right? They got proprietary uh, user interface that's really clean, really good for collecting and, and uh, processing leads. And then they're, they're quite good at the real estate, PPC, and SEM game, specifically as it relates to their site. Uh, and they make money in managing, you know, campaigns for soliciting leads, and they make money by building you know, a really great lead capturing site. Um, and so I think they got two fingers in the cookie jar, right? They're getting a premium hosting fee. They're building premium websites, and then they uh, they manage your spend so that you can use that site to its fullest. And I'm an expert in SEO. I'm an expert in PPC and all of that. And I put them to the challenge of why I wouldn't use my internal team that we have lots of amazing people doing. And, uh, you know, they impressed us. They really do have a secret sauce that we can't compete with, even at my level. And uh, we did decide to go with them. That's been for six months. It's been a success. I'm a little annoyed that we have to take it down because that was one of the better pieces of uh, our online lead gen. That was really working great. But, you know, we were doing radio. We were doing, we were doing predictive marketing. Uh, we were actually able to start, start predicting of people who would sell six months, a year ahead of time based on some, you know, the herd effect and other things, 200 different factors. So we were really inventing something cool. And uh, we're going to put that on the back burner and probably try and, you know, help other real estate agents take some of that technology that we built that we know works and use it as a way to get in with them so they know that we're committed to getting out of the real estate game and staying the best in the property management game, but yet helping them grow their business so they can help us grow ours. Yeah, Brenton, I wish I had more time with you. So, so, so just real quick on that predictive, because I think we're, we're, was that something you did internally or were you using like a smart zip? Well, we've used SmartZip. That's what got us on the idea. But then we started doing something intern uh, internally and uh, proprietary, something that we basically we took best practices from what SmartZip did. And I'll tell you, um, I wasn't a fan of SmartZip. Yep, and I neither. had very little success. Uh, and I, I bought the rights to Minnesota for a year, and I, I had very little success. But there were some key elements that were great. And, and we incorporated that into some of our rent feeder technology and some of the Boomtown technology and and I think it was our special blend of it that actually started to have traction. Uh, not as much traction as some other things, but it had traction enough where we were going to invest in that pretty heavily to see where it could go. But I don't recommend smart tip. They were really reasonable to deal with. Uh, they're really professional. And my market was Minnesota. I had very little success. I've heard of others who've had great success, so I don't want to rain on their parade. But just do your due diligence. Check them out. You know, I didn't have success. Others had. I, I can tell you that very few. I, I talked to a lot of people in the show, Brenton. I, very few people have had success. I, I don't think they're going to be around for, for that much longer. Look, I, I got to let you go. I, just really quickly, I always ask for a book recommendation. What does a guy oh, yeah. like you read, Brenton? Man, I don't read many books. So take my referral highly because I hate books. I don't have the time for them. But there are a few books that have changed my life. Uh, there's three of them. Real quick. Rework. It's a technology book written by Jason Fried, the inventor of Basecamp. Simple, two-page, three-page chapters that revolutionize the way you think about business. Go and get it today. I've given out hundreds of copies to anybody that matters to me. 
And then the thing that's changed my business, that, that rework changed my personal mindset. The thing that's changed my business the most was a book called Traction, written by Gino Wickman. He helped me organize my business when I was a million-dollar business so that I could become a $30 million business. He gave me the tools, the thought process, the meaning agenda. He gave me everything I needed. He prepared me in a very simple way uh, to do that. And then the follow-up to that, which is round two of that book, is once you have traction, you need to get a grip. And that's round two, and that's utilizing the things you're taught in traction. I'm telling you, go to the bookstore, flip through it. They're one of these books where you can read a chapter in the bookstore, and you're going to see value right there. And that's how good of these, these books are. In fact, um, I'll give away five books on my LinkedIn page. If anybody wants to you know, mention your podcast, go to my LinkedIn page, say, say they love what they heard on, on our show today, and uh, I'll send them uh, a rework, a traction, or a get a grip. I'll donate five books to your fans. That's awesome. That'll be great. Now, and we have a very, very big Twitter following. Are you on Twitter, Brenton? I am on Twitter. Uh, I'm, I'm very political on there. Go and find me at Brenton Hayden. Okay. Otherwise, my business is pro landlord. Perfect. Well, listen, everybody, if you want to get a copy, I mean, go, look, go, go, go say thank you for Brenton. He's a busy guy. Took the time out to come and share with you guys. Um, if you want to get some of those books that uh, a guy like Brenton is recommending, Rework, Traction, or you need to get a grip, you know, you can use our Audible link. Always just go to audibletrial.com slash Super Agents Live. There you go. Hey, Brenton. Hey, man, I really wish I had more time with you. Maybe we can do a follow-up. I really appreciate you taking the time out, man. Let's do it again, man. This was fun. Uh, it was really uh, my pleasure. So thanks for having me on your show. Thanks, buddy. Talk to you soon. Bye now. <clears throat> okay, so this is episode. Well, this is this is um, this is uh, not episode. This is what this is like the second part. This is part two of this twofer. So uh, you heard Brendan Hayden talk about his uh, about his uh, building his business. Now, and look, Brenton is a pretty, um, um, you know, you could hear him, me and him, like, you know, we're going back and forth pretty quickly. He's a pretty dynamic guy. Now, my next guest, and literally, literally, like, these calls were back-to-back. I hung up with Brenton, dial the phone to get my next guest, Matt Johnson. Now, Matt is very different than that. He is 